So I forgot to mention that uh, anytime you divide by zero, uh, you're going to get uh, undefined. Uh, and sometimes on Woodwork, they want you to type the whole undefined. Sometimes it'll be undef. Uh, but that can happen in any of the four trig functions that have a denominator. So obviously the reciprocals um, and also tangent. So if you just read what's here, defined when x not zero. So when x is zero, it is the opposite, which is undefined. So the equivalent thing you could write down, un undefined when x is zero. It's just the exact opposite. And the same thing is true with the secant, cosecant, cotangent. They'll be undefined when you divide by zero. And we'll do more examples of these uh, later as well. So now we're going to get into more geometry of some special triangles. Let's go back. So we're going to use definitely some geometry. So if you either didn't take a geometry class or if the geometry you, uh, class you took was beers ago, uh, the only thing you'll really need out of this is the conclusions that we uh, get to. So you won't, you'll never have to repeat this process that we're about, this geometrical uh, process we're about to do. And we're going to be on the unit circle for all of these. So find. find exact value of three, the, just the first three trig functions of theta equals pi over four. <clears throat> so we'll start with our unit circle. A good circle. Actually, wait, we'll draw a bigger version of this very soon. So we saw up here was pi over two which I could absolutely write as pi over two. But if I write as pi over two, we're gonna have the problem of uh, denominators not matching. <clears throat> so what I wanna write instead is, I'm gonna write pi over two in fourths. So pi over two is of course two pi over four. Just multiply by two over two. And let's use the fourths here. Once you see that the angle straight up is 2 pi over 4, 1 pi over 4 is exactly halfway there. So what we need to do now is basically figure out the x and the y coordinate on this point. The only thing we really know about is the radius is 1. The other thing we know is we're halfway uh, to a right angle, or halfway to pi over 2. So my constructions I'm going to draw in blue here. So we're going to do what's called dropping a perpendicular. So we got a perpendicular angle we just created right there. Let me make this pi over four a little bit smaller. Pi over four, we got a right angle. So I'm going to redraw this triangle much bigger. So the right angle, of course, is pi over two. That's a quarter rotation right there. Um, 90 degrees if you're in degrees, but we're gonna keep it in radians. Now to get the last angle of our triangle here, <coughs> another common letter. So we got theta as our main angle. I'm gonna use another Greek letter, and this one's called phi. And let me write these down. If you're ever playing Scrabble or Words with Friends or any other game, word great game, um, these can come in handy. So theta, T-H-E-T-A, the T-A, is how you spell it. And this one is phi. Should be F-I, but of course, we use P-H when we need an F. So these are two uh, common Greek letters that we're going to use for angles. So I'm just going to use this phi for the other angle. So we're going to use some geometry properties. And we're going to start with the angle sum. So one thing you might have remembered angle sum of a triangle, let me write that triangle angle sum is 180. Now, we're not working in degrees, so 180 is one pi. 
So what is the angle sum? Phi plus pi over four plus pi over two equals pi. So our angle sum is on the left. We got three angles added together and equals the uh, 180 or pi. And I wanna know what is phi. So we're gonna solve for phi right here. So what do we do? We need to, uh, well fraction sucks, so we're gonna go common denominator. So let's write everything in fourths. And then we'll be subtracting. We already did the two pi. Oh, we're already in fourths on the first angle. Don't do that. Pi over two is two pi over four, and then one pi, four pi over four, and we're gonna solve for phi, so we're subtracting. So we got four pi minus one minus two, which is just one pi over four. So there's our phi, just pi over four. You probably could have told me what phi was right here because we went to common denominator. So pi over four plus pi over four plus two pi over four is four pi over four. <clears throat> so we have a special type of triangle. Two angles are the same. Pi over four, pi over four. This is an isosceles. I don't want to try to spell it because I will get it wrong. But isosceles means you have two angles that are the same. And what that means also is your opposite sides are also the same. So let's look over here at the side name. So if I label sides, that vertical side is a Y. The horizontal side, this side right here, is x. So we'll bring those two letters over here. We got this side's called x. Let me keep both all these measurements in blue. We're starting to get kind of crowded. And this third side's called the hypotenuse, and we do have a right triangle. So that means we can use Pythagorean theorem. So this is, should be one of the first theorems you ever learned in math. And in a right triangle, it tells you the sum of the squares of the two sides uh, equals the square of the hypotenuse, or the side that's across from the right angle. So for us, this is x squared plus y squared equals one squared. Goodness. All right, so one squared is, of course, just one. And the other thing, we have an isosceles triangle, which I didn't write the uh, conclusion from that. I think that's how to spell it. Isosceles triangle. Now I'm gonna write this symbol right here. It looks like an equal sign with a right arrow, and this means implies. So I know I have a right triangle. What this implies is the side x equals the side y. They're the same length. So because x equals y, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to swap out y for x because they're equal. So we got x squared plus x squared equals 1. So we got 2x squared equal 1. And what we're going to do is solve for x. So I like to think about solving for x as getting rid of all of x's friends. So what friends does it have? It's got two friends, they're both twos. When in doubt, <coughs> write this in green. This is PEMDAS. Um, I'm gonna draw a squiggle bubble around this because it's something you should have known already. This is parentheses. Exponents, multiplication, and division. And last up, addition and subtraction. 
and this is a PEMDAS, please excuse my dear asshole sister. You've seen this a lot, and it's generally used for arithmetic, and you would go down the uh, stack. We, in algebra, when in doubt, we're gonna go up. <coughs> so I took care of the uh, addition first, so that's out. Now we got a multiplication division going on, there's a times two, so we're gonna go Multiply both sides by half to get rid of that two. And last up, how do I get rid of the square? We take it uh, square root of both sides. So remember, we're square rooting not one side, we're square rooting the entire equation. So I think a lot of times you've seen it written like that. Totally reasonable to write it either way, but you, there's no time where you could just take a square root of one side of an equation and not the other. So square root x squared is regular x, and square root of a half. <coughs> we're gonna reduce this down a little bit here. The algebra property we're gonna use, this is an exponential property. This is a to the c over b to the c. So you can distribute powers across division, and if you had multiplication, we don't have it in this case, but you have multiplication, exponents work really well with both of those operations, which you never, never, never should do. This is not equal. Uh, it's true there is an a to the c and there is a b to the c term, but when you multiply it out, you got a bunch of these middle terms. Even if c is just two, you have to multiply a times b and then b times a. So you get these uh, middle terms. So there is, there's always gonna be more terms after this. Uh, the only exception is if c equals one, but that's really boring if c equals one, it's not worth writing down. So, how that affects us. We got, now, how can I do this with square root? Well, square root is just a half power. So nothing too crazy is going on. And square root of one is just regular one. So x is one over square root two. I'm not going to rationalize this. You're more than welcome to if you uh, feel the need because you've probably had that uh, process drilled into your brain by math teachers again and again and again. And if that you're more comfortable with that, go for it. Uh, we found x, y is equal to x. So y is the same exact value. So we got x and our y, we can go up here, fill these in. So let's go ahead, erase that. And now we can answer sine, cosine, and tangent of pi over four, the values we need are right there. I'll write these down here at the end. Cos pi over four, is the x value right there on the screen. Sine pi over four is the y value, happens to be the same as the x value. And tangent, <coughs> I'm gonna simplify this down, but for now, I'm gonna write y over x. I keep forgetting to write just the equals x equals y over x, so y one over square root two, one over square root two, now, this is gonna simplify to one, and you can do that right now. Uh, but the way I'm gonna do it is multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. And now you can definitely see the square root two over square root two cancels out and you get just one. So tangent theta is just one. Okay, so it's cosine, sine, and tangent. We're gonna do two more of these special triangles, although you're gonna find out very quickly that there's really only one more, and the other one's just a copy of the one we're about to do. What's inside the box is what you need to memorize. I will show you an easier way to memorize these, uh, what look like random numbers. So I'll give you a nice way to remember, remember these. So we're gonna find the exact value of pi over three, 
which is 60 degrees, but we're just gonna go with pi over three. Oh, of, geez, trig functions of, of the three All right, so again, we got a weird denominator, thirds. So we will deal with that. The way we deal with thirds, it looks like an oval, that's good enough. All right, I could start with the pi over two, but it's not gonna be very nice to turn that into thirds. So let's use pi. So go half rotation as pi. I wanna write pi in thirds, that's three pi over three. And I wanna go one pi over three. So this is three of them to go there. I want to go one third of that. So that's approximately right there. If I went two thirds, I'd be looking at that angle right there. So you're basically cutting this half of a pizza into three equal pieces. And it should be approximately like that. I don't want to think about this one right now, just this first pi over three here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing we did last time we're going to drop a perpendicular. You're always going to drop your perpendicular to the x-axis. Uh, all the trick I'm teaching you is uh, made for the x-axis. If you drop your perpendicular to the y-axis, you're going to uh, have to switch things around. So I recommend you don't do that. Always go to the x-axis. find the x-axis is used a lot more than the y-axis and it's going to happen later when we get into reference angles as well. So let's write what we know. Hypotenuse definitely one. We're on the unit circle still and I need to know the same as before x and y. They're definitely not going to be equal this time. You can see that the x got shorter than the x in the last problem. So let's redraw this. Of course we got our x and our y. So let's redraw this triangle a little bit bigger. Trying to keep it to scale. I think that angle I made a little too big. Something more like that. We did. We made a perpendicular, so we got pi over two there. We're gonna do the same angle sum, and we're gonna figure out what is phi right up there. Now we know, of course, we got one as one of our sides, and we'll get the other sides in a minute. Um, so it equals pi if you add up all three angles and we're trying to solve for phi so common denominator is a little bit miserable here so what we're going to do is go down to six sixths however you say that word <clears throat> so we got pi over six i'm going to subtract the pi of Let's subtract first, common denominator second. So now we gotta drop it to six pi over six minus two pi over six minus three pi over six. And now common denominator, everything works out nicely. Six minus two minus three leaves us with one pi over six. All right, so we got pi over six is our angle at the top. Draw that in here, pi over six, okay. One thing to notice, pi over six is twice as big as pi over three. So what we're gonna do to take advantage of that is draw a second triangle. It's gonna be the same as the first triangle, except a mirror image. So I'm gonna have pi over six, pi over three, and of course, another right angle there. So why in the world are we doing this? Look at the big angle here. 
So if I go across pi over six, another pi over six, this big angle is pi over three. So what does that mean about the measurement of this side? We have an equilateral triangle, pi over three, pi over three, pi over three. So the big side, every side is the same, one, one. This big side on the bottom is one, which I have no place to write that. So this big side is one right here. I don't really want the big side. What I want is half of the big side. And good news, half of one is a half. So I got a half there. I won't need it, but I got another half right here. All right, so that was a lot of work to get the half. Uh, we still need to get the Y. So we got one and a half, and we just have to get that third side, so I'm gonna redraw this triangle. We don't need too much information on it anymore. This is all I need to get the third side. And we're just gonna go Pythagorean theorem. So we go third side y, and we have y squared plus one half squared equals one. So we'll subtract one fourth. Now fractions suck, one fourth, we better go into fourths. So four minus one is three fourths. And now square root both sides. Now when you square root, you do get a plus minus, absolutely. And we do the same uh, thing we did before, we're distributing the square root to the three and the four. And of course, the only thing we can really do, square root four, is just two. Now we do have to deal with the plus minus. So let's think about which, uh, should we use positive or negative y? We know exactly where angle is. And in quadrant one, we know x is positive and y is positive. So I could write a little note here in quad one. So x positive, y is positive, so I'm just gonna go with the positive choice right here for y. So I don't need to keep writing the plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. We just got y equals square root of three over two. And x was one half, yeah, right there. So let's go write these two values. So x is a half. And that's what we're using up here. And I'm gonna write down the trig functions, three trig functions of pi over three. Cos pi over three is x, which is pi, oh, whew, one half. Sine pi over three is y, which is square root three over two. And tangent. So I'm gonna leave a little space here because we're gonna have an ugly fraction that needs to be reduced. So let's write the ugly fraction. Now before I told you to, no matter what, you have to deal with the multi-fraction, uh, multi fraction first thing. Uh, there is sometimes options. You don't always have to multiply by, by the reciprocal of the denominator. It will work if I do it. Uh, there's another option. I can multiply by one. The version of one I'm gonna multiply by is two over two. So how does this work? This two gets multiplied into the top and this two gets multiplied into the bottom. So it looks like square root of three over two times two divided by one over two times two. And why did I do this? Because two cancels the half, two cancels the half. We have square root of three over one, which finally reduces to square root of three. So here's our next set of sides that we need to remember. And again, you don't need to know all this geometry that we did. You just need to know the three trig values and I'll give you a better way to memorize these. So just bear with me, we're gonna do one more triangle and then we will line them all up. All right, so our last example, <clears throat> and feel free to 
pause this whenever you need to. Um, and especially, I try to scroll down a few lines at a time. I try not to just jump right down like this so you can't see anything. So if I'm going too fast and you're, what you're writing disappears on the top of the screen, just hit pause, catch up with what you need to catch up with, and then resume. All right, so our last example here, our last geometrical example at least, so we're going to find the three, well, if I write too far to the bottom of the screen, the pen messes up. It makes my writing look weird. Find the three trig. We'll just lose cosine. Find three trig functions of theta equals pi over six. Oh, pi over six, that's familiar. Yup, that was not our main angle last time, but that was our angle at the very top of this triangle. So what I'm gonna do is copy down the black triangle, not using any of this green stuff here. So just the original triangle, basically. I'm gonna write down what we know. It's that black triangle we just were looking at a second ago. One half, one, square root three over two. Now, make sure I write, we a pi over three, pi over six right angle. All right, so we know that from before. Let's figure out where in the world does pi over six land in our unit circle. All right, pi over six, well, fractions suck unless you have common denominator. So pi over two, we're gonna write this in six. This is easy to write in six. Three pi over six. Now, if you're wondering how am I doing this so quickly, well, basically, so I've been doing this since dinosaurs were on the planet, but another uh, way I can do this so quickly, two times what is six? Two times three, and you have to be fair, multiply both by three. So I'm really multiplying by three over three is how I'm actually doing this. Oh no, our pi turned into an 11. There we go. So I don't really want the pi over two. I just want the value, but I want it in sixth sixths. All right, that's three pi over six. I want one pi over six, so we're gonna cut this rotation into three pieces. So not cutting into two pieces like last time, we're cutting into three. So you got this little bit of pizza and you're trying to cut it into three equal pieces. The first one should be a tiny bit bigger. All right, that looks pretty good. And this one, is pi over six. All right, we're gonna play the same game we did before. We're gonna always drop our perpendicular to the x-axis. And of course I wanna know the x, y. So this vertical side, which I can't really, I wanna write the y right here, but that's kinda too small. All right, I don't really care about this other triangle at the moment. So this triangle we want to know about. How does that triangle, let's redraw this guy. And if I do the angle sum, I have the exact same angles that I have in my original triangle, so I'm gonna get pi over three has to be my third angle there. So let's compare these two triangles. They are, I believe the word is similar. Uh, you do have to do one reflection. It's a little bit strange, but if you think about this line right here, if you reflect across this line, you will turn our blue triangle into the black triangle. These are similar triangles. Maybe congruent. I don't know which word is the correct one, but their angles are all the same. Not only that, if you look very carefully, right angle, opposite of right angle is one, opposite of right angle is one. So what that tells us is the sides are gonna match as well. So the little side, is a half and the big side square root three over two so it's the exact same triangle we just have to f flip it around a little bit 
And that's all we're going to do for this. We got the X, got the Y. Now we're ready to write down cos power over 6 square root 3. Write X first. And last up, tangent. Leave some space for the reduced form. I'm going to write y over x. All right, and we need to we have multi story fractions, so we need to reduce it. This time I will multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. There'll be plenty of times later where I multiply like we did in the previous example. So 2 cancels the 2, we're left with the 1 over square root 3. All right, so there we go. There's our last set you have to memorize. So at this point, you should be thinking, well, all right, geometry, well, you're not responsible for that, so that's not a big deal for this class. Uh, but how in the world do you remember all these values I just wrote down? They should seem relatively arbitrary or random. So what we're going to do is very carefully lay these out on a unit circle and see what the pattern looks like. <clears throat> I'm going to draw an intentionally big unit circle. I want a little more space, so I'm going to slide these off the screen. All right, except B in blue. All right, so our unit circle. All right, so we have a few angles to draw in here. Let's start with the easy one to draw, which is the pi over 4. That's, I say it's easy because it's halfway between the two, so it's usually pretty easy to see with your eyes. Now, the next one's a little bit more tricky, and what I'm going to do is draw some guiding lines here. You know what? I will use green for this, but I want to cut this pi over 2 into three pieces. So this is the exact same move we did right here. We're basically going to cut it into three pieces like that. So you're going to ignore that pi over 4 angle and we're going to cut this angle into three pieces. So here we go. Now I'm doing this kind of carefully because I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to draw. I'll do these really tiny. If I want to cut this this big slice of pizza into equal pieces, oh, that was weird. Uh, the way I do it is I'd cut actually six pieces and then every piece is the same size the only weird thing is we're not going to actually use those two slices. Um, we'll figure those out later, but they don't have really nice values. They're, they're quite a bit uglier than the ones that we just found. So we're not going to draw those in. So I'm going to label all the angles in here. We got pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. I'm writing them way out here because if I tried to squeeze pi over 3 in there, nobody would be able to see it. Last up, pi over 2. Okay, so there's our angles. I drew them kind of small so I could fit them in nicely. And now, we got a bunch of points we're going to write down. So let's start with the easy ones. And remember always x, y is cos theta sine theta. So that because the definition of cosine is x and the definition of sine is y, this is not really something new to memorize. So we're going to write down the easy ones, 1, 0, and 0, 1. Whoa. I don't know how that turned into a circle. I need to shape off. All right. 0, 1. Now we computed these three, so we're just going to go and copy the, this is the pi over 6. So here's our pi over 6, square root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. 
next one, one over square root of two, one over square root of two, you can scroll up and see these. And the last one is the reverse of this. Okay, so there we go. These are the values you need. So I would write memorize here, but I'm gonna give you an easier way to memorize this. What I want you to do is look at the, let's look at just the x values and look at the progression. So we went, I'm gonna go this direction, the counterclockwise. So we got one and then square root of three over two, one over square root of two, one over regular two, and zero. How in the world can we memorize these? So if you've got a good memory, you might be able to just knock this out. So what I'm gonna show you instead is a way to memorize these relatively painlessly. Make sure I got enough room to simplify here. Square root of four over four, square root three over four, square root two over four, square root one over four, square root zero over four. So what I want you to do is memorize these. And what we're gonna do is reduce them now. Square root four over four, well that's pretty easy to reduce. Four over four is one, and then square root one is one. No problem, square root three over four, that's square root three over square root four, which reduces to, square root four reduces it to two. Next up, two fourths. I'll just reduce the fraction, two fourths is a half, and square root of a half, we saw before, is one over square root two. Next one, we're going to split the power, so it's square root one over square root four, square root one is one, square root four is two, and zero over four, that's square root zero, and zero times zero is zero, so square root of zero is zero. So now, you have the progression of these values. And if you look at the x values, let's see, oops, yeah, so kind of wrote them weird, but one, let's see, use a highlighter, one, square root of three over two, one over square root of two, one half, zero. So that would be going downwards right here. And so what about the y values? Well, they go this way. Zero, one half, one, one over square root two, square root three over two, one. So that's how the y values go and the x values go the opposite way. So what I recommend you memorize are these right here. And then remember how to put them on the unit circle. <clears throat> Sorry, I have allergies right now. Uh, of course, angles are not just in quadrant one, they're in quadrant two, three, and four. So how do we get all the rest? So what I want you to do is only memorize the first quadrant of the unit circle. I'm going to do what I recommend you don't do, which is write out a full unit circle. So we're gonna do the same big circle. So make sure you draw a big circle here. We've got a lot to write in. Nice, all right, and let's see, straight edge, that's not magnetic. All right, no. Let's see if this will give me a nice straight line here. Oh, I think the paper's conductive. Ugh. All right, I'll just hand draw all this. I'm gonna be drawing a lot of lines through this circle. I wanted to keep them as straight as possible. So let's do our easy one right there. 
Now our next one is a third, looks about like that. I'm just drawing these all the way through. Come on, I don't need emojis. I'm trying to use a coffee stirrer, but apparently wood conducts some electricity as well. you come from? Alright, this will just have to be a little ugly. So I'm drawing what I call the quarter cuts, or the pi over four cuts, and then the thirds, or the sixths, depending on how you look at it. Like this. Like that. So what you're not going to see is the twelfths. I'm gonna use a super thin marker. Here's the twelfths that we're not using. Man, this is ugly. So we're not gonna use the twelfths. All right, we're gonna, as quickly as we can, write all the points here. Now, marker got way too skinny. Here we go, pi over six. I'm gonna write these further out so I got plenty of room. Pi over four, pi over three, pi over two. What in the world's the name of this angle? Well, if we think about it, it's pi over two plus another pi over six. We're basically going pi over two and then we're gonna go another pi over six. So fractions suck unless you go common denominator. Two pi over three. There we go. So the next one right here, how far is that? That's gonna be basically pi over four, pi over four, pi over four. Three pi over four. Our next angle, it's probably easier to think, so I can draw that. It's easier to think about this is pi over six. We don't normally measure angles like that. And so if I go all the way across, I get pi. So it's basically pi over six less than pi. I don't wanna muck this up with too much writing on here. Nope, wrong eraser. There we go. So this would be five pi over six. And now when I hit the uh, x-axis again, I'm at regular pi. <clears throat> now I'm ready to go to the next angle, pi plus another pi over six is seven pi over six. I'm gonna skip the details of adding these fractions so we got seven pi over six going further, five pi over four. You can count in pi over fours. You're going one, two, three. This is four pi over four. And then five pi over four. Oh. There we go, five pi over four. And after that, be some pi over threes. Four pi over three. Three pi over two. I don't know why I wrote pi way out there. Be consistent. That's pi. Now we're down to here. Three pi over two. And then go another pi over six. And Seven plus three, man. Let's just go three pi over two plus pi over six. Fractions suck unless you go common denominator. So that's nine pi over six plus pi over six, 10 pi over six. And reduce that five pi over three. Good. And 
and then uh, we have five pi over four, six pi over four, seven pi over four. Now that's to there, to there. Last angle that we need is going to be in sixth again. How many pi over sixes? Uh, if I did another right up here, that would be pi over six. So it's basically two pi come back or take away pi over six. And we need a common denominator. And that's 11 pi over six. All right, and we finish up right here. You could write, so going all the way to here, you could write uh, two pi, or you could think of it as zero. Let's get that out and pretend like we know how to do fractions. All right. What's that straight mark doing there? All right, now we're going to write out all the values. So, assuming you got quadrant one memorized, I'm going to copy all these values down. Oh, that's square root three over two. One over square root two, one over square root two, and one half square root three over two. All right, so that's nothing new in quadrant one. How in the world do we do quadrant two? Well, what happens in quadrant two different from quadrant one? Well, any point over here is going to have a negative x coordinate. So let's do the easiest point I could think of, which is that last one that I drew. This one should be pretty easy to see what it is. We're going left on the x-axis, one. So it's negative one to go left, and then zero y. So that's negative one, zero. Not a coincidence that those are very similar. So what happens between those two? Your x-coordinate flips to be negative. So let's think of the same idea. except consider these points right here. So what do they have in common? They're basically the same coordinate, except the x changes to be negative. And actually, I'll write the rest, let me write the rest of these in blue. Not red. So I'm flipping my x to be negative. So that's our three points over there, or really four points over there. Now we're going to move down to quadrant three. So what's happening in quadrant three different from the other quadrants? Well, y is now negative. So what we're going to do is look at how those two are related. They're obviously really similar. And how they're related, just the y becomes negative. So we still have the same negative x-coordinate, but now our y also becomes negative. Uh, next one, I'm just copying the values right off of that point, except making y negative. And last up, copying off the top, I'll try to keep them all on the same screen. I'll be writing very small. So this is negative one half negative square root three over two. And that takes care of quadrant three. Now we're about to jump into quadrant four. And at this point, you should have a pretty good handle on what's going on. Now I could copy out of quadrant three. And the difference between quadrant three and four is our x coordinate becomes positive. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is just go up to quadrant one and use these instead. And just like before, y becomes negative. So this is 1 half negative square root 3 over 2. And I missed a point. I missed the easy point. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. 
this point, you don't even really need to know the top point up there. This is 0x, and we're going to go down 1 for y, so it's negative 1 for y. This is square root, oh, 1 over square root 2. These are written in slightly bad spots. Write values, I just want to write them closer to the actual points they correspond to. up we have uh, square root 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half all right do I want you to memorize this nope I want you to memorize quadrant 1 right there and then be able to flip this around to any other point on the unit circle and you can look this up on Google and get a really nice picture that's computer generated it looks a little prettier than this but this is about the best I can do um, writing on this uh, device here. So that's our full unit circle. Now what we're going to do is answer a bunch of questions, a bunch of trig values of different angles. Um, actually, before we do that, let's get into uh, reference angles. So reference angles are going to allow us to use what we know in quadrant one very quickly. So reference angle is denoted theta bar, and here's our definition. So theta bar, the reference angle, is the smallest angle from theta back to the x-axis. Um, I didn't say back to the positive x-axis, but back to either side of the x-axis. So here's another time where the x-axis plays a more prominent role than the y-axis. And it's also the smallest positive. Um, just a notation or a vocabulary. Theta and... Oh, no, they're not coterminal. We'll get to that later. So forget about that. All right, so we're going to do some examples where we find some reference values. All right, so our first, let's go with something pretty easy. We'll go with uh, 2 pi over, well, let's just go with pi over 3 first. So when you have a small positive angle already in quadrant one, we'll draw our unit circle. Whoa, whoa. Unit circle, unit circle. All right, pi over three. All right, that's our angle theta right there. I want to know what's the smallest angle back to the x-axis. Well, it already is the smallest angle back to the x-axis. So pi over 3 is our reference angle. So when your angle's in quadrant 1, your reference angle is the same exact angle as long as it's uh, positive. All right, 2 pi over 3. So it's going to be a different angle, 2 pi over 3. So we saw, I strongly recommend that you label your angles with the same denominator. So I can't really label the pi over 2 nicely in thirds, so I'm not going to bother writing it in. So 2 pi over 3, there's 1 pi over 3, that's about 2 pi over 3. I didn't really draw a very good circle. So there's 2 pi over 3. So 
I'm going to do theta bar in blue. So theta bar, smallest positive angle back to the x-axis. This is not the fastest or the shortest way to the x-axis. This is right here in blue. So what is the measure of this angle? Here is where you, it's very good to be in thirds. You can see, oh, well, we went two thirds to hit here, and I need to go another one third to hit the x-axis. So pi over 3 is the shortest rotation, or shortest distance may, may be a slightly misleading word, but it's the smallest rotation to get you to the x-axis. So pi over 3 is our reference angle here. Next example. Um, let's get crazy. Let's do some negative... Uh, Seven pi over six. All right. So a couple tricky things. We got negative. So we're rotating the wrong way. We're going. All right. CW. We're going clockwise. I can do a better unit circle. I'm gonna cheat and get a perfect circle. And then my lines are not gonna be good. All right. So we're in six. So normally this is negative pi over two when we're measuring backwards. Uh, but I want six, so this is negative three pi over six. Uh, coming over to here, remember I'm me measuring the wrong way, so my angles I'm gonna write out are all gonna be negative. So I'm measuring backwards. Negative pi, well, I want six. Negative six pi over six. All right, and so let's not even use negative pi. And if I go again up to here, it's negative nine pi over six. All right, now I can see seven pi over six, negative seven pi over six, where that's going to go. So it's gonna to go to six, negative six pi over six and then go another pi over six past that. Once you have that laid out like this, remember the reference angle, smallest positive angle. So I want this little positive angle. What angle is that? That's just pi over, I can't even read that thickness of the marker, nope. There we go, pi over six, that's our reference angle. You do not have to have all these different colors uh, to take notes. I'm just trying to write uh, different pieces in different colors so it's a little more obvious. So there's our pi over six reference angle. So who cares? Why are reference angles useful? Well, the answer to that is because the trig values are really similar to the regular angles. this morning. Let trig theta be any of the six trig functions. All right, so why are reference angles useful? Trig of theta is equal to plus or minus trig of theta bar. So that means if you know the trig value in the first quadrant, you'll have the exact same trig value whatever other quadrant you're in. If you know the reference angle, you'll just have to sometimes turn it into negative. Um, and this works with uh, all six trig functions. So for example, uh, I'll start with cosine, we went with that one first. Cos theta is plus or minus cos theta bar, sine theta, plus or minus sine theta bar. All right, so this is how, and of course the other three tri reciprocal trig functions work exactly the same way. So 
now we're going to use, so this next example, so we're going to use reference angles to find exact values. So first up, cos 5 pi over 4. So here we have theta equals 5 pi over 4. And I need to figure out what is a reference angle, theta bar. So a word of advice, if you think that you can finish this problem off right here, if you can find theta bar, go ahead and hit pause, find theta bar, and then hit play, and make sure that what you get agrees with what I'm going to write down. Uh, this is very useful because if you use your brain to compute this instead of just using your ears and your eyes to watch me compute this, uh, if you actually use your brain, it, it will help you remember this a lot better. And that's true for pretty much anything, any example I do that you think you know how to do, I strongly recommend you hit the pause button and go ahead and, and try to finish it off yourself and then uh, hit play and make sure that we, you agree with what, what I've written down. And Hopefully I won't make too many mistakes. So that's theta, pi pi over four. So here we go, unit circle, we're in fourths. So I'm just going to jump right down to four pi over four. That's pi, of course, and we want five pi over four. So I'm gonna run down to there. That is five pi over four. I'll write the angle right there. All right, so that's five pi over four. So in blue, we'll do the reference angle, theta bar. Now, <clears throat> we're in fourths, I did that on purpose so that our math would not be so bad. You go five pi over four to hit the angle we want. Four pi over four gets you to here. So that what's left? Pi over four. So theta bar is pi over four. So using that reference angle property, cos 5 pi over 4 equals plus or minus cos pi over 4. So if you have this memorized, cos pi over 4 memorized, you can just write down the value 1 over square root 2. All right, plus or minus, we have to make a choice. What do we want to go with? And this is completely determined by what quadrant we're in. We are in quadrant 3, so everybody is negative. So if I wrote down, this goes negative, negative. They're both negative. So I'm gonna go choose the negative. So we get negative one over square root two. So we got a reference angle and use that to get our cosine value. Let's do a sine next. Sine, let's get a little crazy and do negative. Um, 8 pi over 3. So first off, we're spinning the wrong way. Not a problem. The other thing that's a little bit more tricky this time is we have a relatively large angle. It's a negative angle, but it's a large angle. So here's one way to think about, uh, so we got our theta, let me write our theta over here on the right side. So our theta is negative 8 pi over 3. So I did a little bit of arithmetic, and the reason I split this into a negative six pi over three, negative six pi is negative two pi minus two pi over three. So we're definitely rotating the wrong way, or the clockwise direction. The reason I wrote this as negative two pi, here's a negative two pi rotation. I can draw a better spiral. Perfect, that's a negative pi rotation negative two pi rotation. That's a full rotation the wrong direction. Now I'm gonna go another negative two pi over three. So there's negative pi, also known as negative three pi over three. 
so we're going to go two thirds of the way there. Let me finish this angle in green right there. So the black measurement was two, negative two pi, and then we did negative two pi over three. So that full spiral angle is negative eight pi over three. So I just showed you how to basically, I call this unwinding an angle, where you write it as, oh, there's a full rotation, and, and you're basically worried about how much is the remainder. Because that's really where it stops. If this was a negative 12 pi, that would just be a lot of rotations followed by a little bit left over. All right, reference angle, we're gonna switch to blue. Reference angle right here, easy to draw. Computing it, well if we look, I'm comparing these two right here. So how much more do I have to go? It's tempting to write negative pi over three, but remember you want the smallest positive angle, so it's really pi over three. So the positive angle would be measured clockwise. All right, so there's our reference angle. That's our theta bar. All right, all right, that. So our reference angle property, sine negative eight pi over three is equal to plus or minus sine theta bar. Now this is where you have to have this memorized. Sine pi over three is one, not one half, square root three over two. And I have to choose plus or minus. I probably should have gone a different quadrant, but in quadrant three, you don't have to think too much because everybody's negative. So we're gonna you know, use the negative sign, so it's negative square root three over two. Quadrant, uh, if, if we were over here in quadrant two, I'd have to be careful. X is negative in quadrant two, Y is positive. And similarly, if we were down here, quadrant four, your Y is negative and your X is positive. So you just gotta be careful about which of the X or Y values uh, are positive or negative in which quadrant. So that is how to use reference angles to compute.